So I made this reading app that you can scroll through with these amazing animations and micro interactions. Then I made a sign up form that you can actually validate and test. The craziest thing is this voice activated AI assistant that I just created. This is some next level prototyping and interaction design and it's surprisingly easy to do. And I'm gonna walk you through how to make all this stuff. So click through prototypes or something that we're pretty familiar with in Figma doing these screen to screen connections. But when you want to go deeper with micro interactions and trigger based prototyping, you need software that's a little bit more advanced and you can do it with Figma and this amazing tool called Protopie. Here we are in Figma and I have my first design, which is just the first screen of an onboarding flow. And we're going to install the Protopie plugin. So search for Protopie inside of the plugins, click on it. Mine's already installed, but you would install it here. And then you're gonna select your frame and then run that Protopie plugin. So what's gonna happen when you click export is that it's going to take this frame and convert it to a scene inside of Protopie. So a scene is synonymous to a main frame or a screen design in Figma. So now here we are in Protopie. It's loading up the design from Figma. You'll see a few extra panels You'll see the scenes window over here, which brings in all of those frames, the layers panel, and then the components where you can have local components, team libraries, and design systems. And then you'll notice another panel over on the right that says add a trigger. So Figma and Protopie are also reciprocal. So if you make changes to the Figma designs, they will be reflected in Protopie through that plugin. So if I wanted to change this button color, for example, I can do that and you'll see that it changed to export object. What that did was it just exported that single element. So back in Protopie, there's my updated scene. Now the thing about Protopie that's really gonna help you wrap your head around it is understanding the interaction model. So where Figma is a screen to screen connection for prototypes, Protopie uses an object trigger and response model. Everything you do will have an object selected, then you'll have a trigger and you'll apply an action to that and then you'll have a response. So this is amazing because it makes it very easy to target very specific elements and make them do specific things. Now over in the layers panel, you'll notice that what it brings in from Figma is organized a little differently. So it will take nested items and it will put them into groups. And so you may need to break apart your Figma designs a little bit, move things around in order to select the correct elements and trigger them. Now, Protopie's strength lies in selecting existing design elements, objects, components, and then adding triggers to them. So I prefer to do all of my really polished UI design in Figma and then import them into Protopie rather than creating something in Protopie from scratch. But you can, you can use Protopie to create things from scratch. You can import media. There are your basic shapes, text, all of that stuff. So let's start out with a very simple one, which is just jumping to another screen or scene here. I can select this button, which is my object, and then I'm gonna add a trigger. And you'll see all of these trigger options come down. There are familiar ones like tap and double tap, touch, fling, pull, drag, pinch. And then there's some that you might not have seen before like chain, range, start, and detect and there are mouse interactions, inputs, and then the coolest part are these sensor interactions, and this allows you to tap into your device's native sensors and other Internet of Things objects. So if I click on this object, add a trigger, I want something to happen when I tap it. That's the trigger. And then under this, you'll see this tiny little plus button, and that's the response. So when tapped, these are all of the things that can happen. It can move, scale, rotate, 3D rotate, change the opacity, the color, the radius, lots of little responses that can happen. Now, when you wanna to move to another screen, jump is the one that you're gonna to wanna to use. So we're gonna add a jump response, and then the next step is that you need to go to this dropdown and you need to select the correct screen that you wanted to jump to. So I wanted to go to this scroll screen. So now, when we go to preview at the top, so we're gonna open this preview window, click on next, and then it transitions to our next screen. These icons at the top are important. Again, this preview is how you open the preview window to actually interact with the prototype. Then you have your device, which brings up a QR code that you can scan onto your iPhone or iPad to actually run one of these prototypes on your device. And I'll show you that a little later. 
and then you've got the cloud. And so you might want to save some of your projects to the cloud so you can access them from anywhere um, rather than locally onto your computer. And then this little panel that is hardly noticeable. When you click on one of these range indicators, you can change the length of the animation, the duration of it. You can move it to start at different times. So this is kind of your timeline for each of these responses, um, the length, the delay, all of that stuff. And then you'll see that you can apply all of these other transitions. So similar to Figma, you have these different styles of transitions that you can apply. So that's just one simple trigger interaction. So let's move on to a little bit more of an advanced example. So in order to get to this onboarding screen, you got to sign in. Sign in is probably the most ubiquitous design pattern that every app and an application and software uses. So the thing that's amazing about Protopie is that you can actually test and validate these form inputs. And that's something you can't really do in Figma. In order to understand that, we have to look at how this screen is constructed. I have a simple email form and a password form field input. And so in Figma, we would just draw these out as static design objects, but inside of Protopie, we need to make sure that these are actual input fields. So we want to go over here to text, and then we want to select input. And then from there, we can draw out an input field, and now we can change the, the color of it, uh, the placeholder text. We can change the stroke, the field input color, the fill, all of that. So I already have these set up here. And if I click on one, you'll see that I have a bunch of triggers and interactions uh, and responses here. And so what you'll want to do is understand the basics of how these formulas work. How did I figure it out? Well, I went to Protopie School. They have an amazing set of lessons and free courses like Protopie 101 that goes in detail about how to do all of these things. And I highly recommend you check out those lessons because you can even get a certificate of completion to add to your CV when you're done. I went through this whole course. It was very enlightening and it made it very easy, especially with all of the uh, downloadable examples and use cases for you to go through. So right here on their blog, there is a great breakdown of how to create interactive form elements that check user input. And so you can go through this and find all of these formulas. And you'll see here that whenever we want to add a response to a form field, we want to use the focus out and focus in. So for the focus out on the email, we want to select that. And for the focus in, we're going to select password. So the focus out is used to trigger an error message when the text doesn't meet the requirements. And then we're going to use detect to check and validate when the text meets those requirements. So this is creating a condition for that trigger so that if there's something there or not there that should be and you want to have a condition set for that, this will help validate whether or not that's there to give you the result on the screen that you would want to see or to show to the user. So for this, I want that email to include an at symbol so that people can't put in a bogus name or email. So it's going to check to see if there is an at symbol there. And then if there is, there is a little error message that I have here. I've lowered the opacity for this example, but if I turn it up, it's a red arrow message and it says, Hmm, that doesn't seem like an email address. So I'm going to hide the opacity on that. But when there is not an at symbol included in the response that someone inputs into this field, then I want to show that message. So I basically want to hide this until there is an error. And then I, I'm going to make sure that all of these conditions are met. So the email has to have an at symbol. The password has to be the right length. And for the length of the password over here, I'm selecting that password field. So this action applies to that. And then I am going to add in a formula it has to be a minimum of six characters. If it's less than that, and then it's not going to validate the form. So let's go to preview and take a look. So as soon as I click, this is going to bring up the native keyboard and I will use my keyboard in front of my computer to, um, to input text into this. So if I just type in Liz, for example, and I move to password, it's going to tell me that that's not a valid email address because there's no at symbol. So now if I say at gmail.com, it recognizes that there's an at symbol. It looks like an actual email address. It's going to let me move forward. And now if I enter in four characters, it says, please enter at least six. And if I add a few more, 
then that error message goes away and this sign in button comes up and then I can move on to our onboarding screen. So the next screen after this is this really cool scrolling animation. So I brought this in from Figma again. I've set up these book covers and I've just put them in order, um, a simple image, and then I've added this little um, rectangle on top of them to give it some separation. And that's pretty much it. And they're all in a straight line. For this one, we're gonna use a chain trigger. And so we're gonna add a chain and then we want to rotate these books in 3D. So I'm gonna add the 3D rotate response right here. And then when we click into this, we're gonna see a bunch of options. So I want to start with the first one right here. Number one is my first book group cover. And then I want it to pivot from its origin. So right where it is, I wanted to make a change and pivot. I'm gonna keep the depth perspective at 1000. And then I'm going to adjust these ranges based on how I see fit, the scroll and the angle, like how much I wanted to scroll and how much I wanted to angle as it scrolls. And then I'm going to have it go up. So it's going to angle upwards. So I'm gonna apply that to each one of these in a chain. So right as this one's happening, this is gonna happen. And remember over here, we've got control of our animations and our timings. So I can move these around a little bit. I can adjust these so that they're like slightly different timing. I can have them staggered and I can change the duration of these. So now we're going to click on preview. That's gonna bring up our preview window and I can scroll through these like that. It's a really cool effect. It's very three dimensional. It shows the whole length of the object when you scroll and you can see everything quite nicely. And then I wanna be able to click on one of these books and open it. So when I do that, it kind of has like a little zoom in effect like that. So let's move over to our next scene. This is called zoom. And I'm gonna kick that off with a start trigger. And I just want the opacity to come in. So I want it to be um, no opacity when it starts. And then I want it to zoom into full opacity. Really simple, it gives it a nice fading effect. And that's what I wanted to do at the start, right when it transitions from the previous screen. So again, let's preview that, go back to the last scene, click on preview, scrolling, scrolling, click on this and boom, it comes in. So you'll also notice that this progress bar kind of slides in and I was going through this pretty fast so I could probably come up with a better response for that that makes it look like it really fills up the bar. But again, I'm just gonna use a simple interaction here and that is um, after tapping on that book, I want it to just the opacity to automatically come in after that. And so that's exactly what's happening here to this progress bar. After that, when I've clicked this book, I want the page to flip open like a real book, like something you might see in um, Apple books. And so that happens there. And I'm gonna use that same 3D rotation effect. So when I click here and I tap on the book, it's gonna 3D rotate and it's gonna do it. We're gonna change the direction, right? Cause we don't want it to go up like we did in the previous example. We want it to go left and open out to the left as if we're reading left to right. And so everything else is gonna stay the same. We make sure we select the correct image from this. And this is really gonna be your best friend. You wanna make sure you're selecting the correct layer to apply these triggers to. Now for really my favorite. You can tap right into your device's native sensors and use things like this voice command feature. We're going to set up some voice activation on our phone. This one seems really complicated, but surprisingly, I think it's one of the easier ones to do. And so I have my starting screen here set up really easy. I just added a text layer and I added a feedback input layer and then a folder here that has a video so that it shows this cool um, graphic voice visualizer. And then I have a vector graphic down here at the bottom. So that's it, a couple of layers and we're all set up there. So we're gonna add some triggers here. I'm gonna go over here to my file that already has these triggers. We're gonna start with a start trigger and then that's gonna be listen. Down here, there's a beta feature called listen and that's what we wanna select. And then the next trigger will be, hi, Avery. Hi there, nice to meet you. Look at that, it actually, <laughs> it actually works right here. So it's gonna listen for that, then it's gonna say something. And she said, hi there, nice to meet you. So that's the text that I put in there. 
it's going to start listening again. So there's a listen, you speak, she replies, and then she listens again. And so next we're gonna have a voice command and we're gonna ask her a question. So this one is, what's the weather like? And then it's she- It's currently 20 degrees and sunny. So cool. So then it replies with that and so on and so forth. So now for the fun part, we're gonna test it on our device. I've downloaded the ProtoPie app here on my phone. And I'm just gonna scan that QR code right there on the screen. So now I can say, Hi, Avery. Hi there. Nice to meet you. What's the weather like today? It's currently 20 degrees and sunny. So with ProtoPie, I was able to make these extremely realistic prototypes that you just can't do easily in any other design software. And you don't have to take my word for it. Companies like Google, Meta, and Microsoft, and thousands of other design teams from around the world are using ProtoPie to create these amazing advanced interactions and prototypes. You have to check it out for yourself. There is a link in the description for 30% off. So get over there and start making the coolest and craziest prototypes you can come up with and tag designer up and and protopie on social media.